EDA meeting. Can I start, Kevin? Yeah. Or do you want a little pause? No, no go. Okay. Please. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, I, but I, he normally makes me pause. No. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order at 12.21. It just flipped. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Hatfield. Here. Commissioner Hubbard. Here. Commissioner Wong. Here. Commissioner Graw. Here. President Winschittle. Yes. Uh, item three <laughs> is adopting the agenda. Corrections or additions, if not, I'd entertain a motion. Motion. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Hatfield. No, Hubbard. 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 But I'll second. Second by Commissioner Hatfield. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Approve previous meeting minutes from October 4th EDA meeting. Again, if there are no corrections or additions, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Graw. Second. Second by Commissioner Hubbard. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Moves to item five. Authorize President and Executive Director to sign and purchase and redevelopment agreement with the Carver County Community Development Agency for Ernst House Project. So I'm going to turn this over to Nate since this is his last night as Assistant Administrator, uh, Economic Deve Development Coordinator. But I also want to just quickly recognize Elise Durbin for being such a patient such a patient person tonight. So with that, I was I'll trying to figure out oh, <laughs> when this bomb is going to drop what she's here for. <laughs> oh, just wait. You think we're done. Uh, another two hours later. Yeah. I, f I feel much better now. Well, President oh. Commissioners, this is an item that was also on the consent agenda item for the council meeting this evening. Um, this is a purchase and development agreement for the redevelopment of the Ernst and S House, which is located at 211 and 217 Walnut Street. Uh, the Ernst House stands today and would be redeveloped into, by the CDA into a single family home. The S House no longer exists and is a vacant lot. Um, and the CDA is proposing to uh, put three homes onto that location. And you will see that concept plan in January Yes, um, come come in front of the Planning Commission and in front of you as well. Um, but for tonight, we want to get the purchase and development agreement in place so that they can indicate, um, you know, site control uh, ahead of their uh, entering into the planning process. There is a TIF district that was approved and put into place uh, by, by the city. Um, when was that? last year <laughs> um, and so there would be a TIF contribution uh, into that project we're also talking about putting into uh, on the city's and the EDA side uh, contribution from the housing trust fund and then also uh, dollars that have been obtained through the CDA's growth partnership initiative grant um, so that ends up being the, the city's contribution in the project the CDA would be agreeing to purchase the property for four hundred thousand dollars from the city um, and then contributing uh, funds that were received through MHFA and Met Council grant application that we jointly worked on. Um, the property would be placed in the Carver County Community Land Trust, so it would be owner-occupied housing, um, basically in perpetuity through the land trust um, and having the property there. Um, the CDA is also agreeing to contribute some of its own funds into the project and then also uh, intending to sell the properties and those proceeds would go towards development costs as well. Uh, so with that, I guess I would open it up to any questions um, from the commission. So question about the land trust. Mm -hmm. So when, so someone enters into agreement for uh, occupancy of the unit in the land trust, mm -hmm. they would basically be paying into the land trust for use of the property, but at some point the money understands the structure is designed so that they get some percentage of the equity back that would be useful for you know that they would be able to take and apply to yep. some other yep. Yep. Uh, whoops. how how much of that would would they expect to gain from that there's actual percentage yeah. that's applied to that but yeah 
Yes, good evening, uh, Mr. President, Commissioners, Elise Durbin with the Carver County CDA. Uh, your question, Commissioner, uh, in the ground lease, the uh, homeowner receives 25% of the appreciation. The remaining 75% stays with the, the property itself in order to maintain that affordability for future buyers. So that means that, so if we play it out and say that, let's say that if you, I mean, just we'll use simple numbers, right? So if someone said that, you know, okay, the, the house was $100,000 when they first occupied it, so it appreciates let's say it doubles in value over like a certain term, doesn't really matter what the term is, but it doubles in value. So that appreciation is another $100,000 and they would retain 25,000 of the 100,000, but all throughout that period, they're paying in a certain amount as, uh, as part of into that trust agreement. Right, right, they pay a $25 ground lease fee per yep. month into that um, agreement. Okay, and then from there, then they would get back to 25% when you know, they basically give up the lease and move on to the next property. What about the maintenance costs and stuff that go into that too? And because, you know, who's responsible for the cost of the maintenance and for the upkeep? Uh, for the maintenance and upkeep, they are responsible to maintain their home as any other homeowner would. They are also responsible for paying property taxes on that, uh, not only the building, but also the land itself. Um, and additionally, when they go to sell, they would recoup any money that they pay down on their mortgage, just as any other home buyer would. And I think that's an important point to point. It's yes. not just the 25%, it's what they've actually paid plus the 25%. Okay. Oh, so basically they would get that back. They get that back right. plus 25% okay. appreciation. Okay, plus appreciation. Yeah. And so, and the only thing they couldn't do is they couldn't make any necessarily uh, improvements to the property because that's because the idea is to keep the property like stable they but, can but right. they have to be approved by the right. land trust board okay That's correct. and there's some things you want them to make improvements on uh there's some things like you probably wouldn't want to add a swimming pool to an affordable house because you know that's right yeah. kind of defeats the purpose yeah, it sort of defeats exactly. the purpose yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah good but what happens if they're not doing the routine maintenance that they need then that's one of the advantages of having the land trust involved through the ground lease is it sort of keeps that connection with them to make sure that they're actually taking care of their property. That's good. So what happens if they're not taking care of the property? We do have the ability to go in and to do regular kind of maintenance checks and make sure that they are keeping up on it. And the ground lease spells out what we can do and, and what we can <coughs> ask them to um, maintain. I think one of the big differences with this, though, is that unlike a rental situation, they own this, and they're getting 100% plus 25% of the appreciation. So, you know, they're, they have skin in the game. Yeah, because, like, the mortgage is in their name, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Because, and, you know, it's one of those things, I mean, in the big scheme of things, I, I think, you know, it's a, it's a really good program to try to, you know, to as kind of almost a Kickstarter for people who don't have the ability to save up for... Um, you know, a down payment on a home to get them in that first home so that way they can actually get going with that. And mm -hmm. what's the typical duration of like how long someone stays in a, in a land trust? Yeah, typically it's about five to seven years. That's what we've seen in land trusts throughout the Twin Cities. And so how much would they typically, like what, what, is the, what have we typically been seeing them like walk away with? It just depends. It depends on when they actually sell. Um, and what they they bought it for. Yeah, it depends on the property too and what yeah. the valuation is. So, yeah. Okay. So I mean, at some point we could have a conversation offline about you know just kind of just because I'd be interested just to understand the the valuation because I, I think overall the model is a good model, but I've heard some some not so good stories from other communities that maybe manage their land trust differently than we do. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to understand more about ours because some of those, you know, it seemed like I've heard some frustration from people who live in, in land trust where they feel like, you know, like I'm paying a lot of money and I'm not, and if I sell it, I'm walking away with almost nothing still compared to my neighbor next door, right? I think the real key with the land trust is that it is for people who would not own a house mm -hmm. what, but right. for, exactly. but for well, that's what I thought that's yes, what's exactly. getting them in, yeah. into well, but that's but that's but this is I'm, you know even then it still refers to like people who wouldn't afford a house and then their perspective is that even going to a land trust or going to a land trust they still can't afford a house because now they lost that you know, because of the way the trust was structured, yeah. they lost equity. But I think it's a different, it may be a different yeah, land trust. Well, and, and every land trust yeah. sets up their trust document differently. Yeah. And the, um, 
so I think, you know, first of all, I think it's that the, the people that are going in really wouldn't have a home that they own but for that. And then I think that the, the other part is real clear communication, uh, you know, with the, the home buyer. And the reason that this works so well in the CDA is one of their bread and butter items is uh, housing education. And so, you know, that's something that they provide to, to people in the community, regardless if they're in a land trust home or not, is this sort of how do you, how does somebody that's never owned a home, you know, how do they go about, you know, what do they have to be concerned about? What do they have to be educated on? So they sort of tie that together with the education about what makes a land trust different than any other type of, mm -hmm. of housing. Because this land trust has been around long enough, and we really haven't had any issues. No, two, we it, actually it was Kevin and I were part of the original board. It was started back in 2002, mm -hmm. so it's it's been around for almost 20 years. And we've why how many properties now in town are? Uh, we have 36 properties total throughout the county. And so this would bring it up to 40 then? This would be 40, yeah. and then there's another six new units anticipated to come on with the Habitat project at Chumper. Yep. Yeah. Do these properties pay real estate taxes then? Yep. Yes, yep. they do. They do. Full, the full property tax. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, as long as you're here, uh, how are, or is, is this going to be like that other part would be like a, a, a triplex? I They're mean, they get... To get three homes in that single lot, that's they're attached townhomes. Has it like that's, has the plan so changed since it went before yeah, the Yeah, you'll see you'll see it in front of you in January. Um, previous thought was to do townhomes. What the CDA is looking at are actually in the individual standalone yeah. homes oh, okay. um, scattered throughout in that. In a single site. lot. On the single lot. Yeah. Huh. Yep. I remember so when it came be before on the heritage preservation yeah. meeting and like looking at it. That was years ago. That might have been the old house. It's almost like a, a no, row house in Chicago were, or something. But yeah, there was something going on. But there was something about the snow plowing. Anyway, we'll and, see it in January. So yeah, yeah, yep, you'll see it in January. I think you know I would encourage Let's you to reserve a. <laughs> reserve your uh, judgment until you see it. Um, but I do think that what you'll find is that the way that they're on the site um, does allow for some, some good outdoor space um, that can be shared amongst the users and also I think um, may interplay a little bit better with the uh, Paseo improvements that would go on behind it than what the townhomes would have. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I really want to thank Elise. This project wouldn't be happening but for her and Nate. So I'll thank you too, Nate. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, <laughs> mostly to Elise. Yeah, but I, I mean, I only say that because this has been what five, six years in the making. I mean, this this. I'm has surprised been, we don't get more noise about it. The yeah, railing I'm, falling off. Yeah, I mean, it it, it is. I always say that small Downtown people are different. You don't get it. We don't mind a little railing falling off its character. <laughs> it, it's the smaller the project sometimes, the harder they are to do. And they've done a great job of coming in and providing a model for us to be able to move forward and I think create something that will be really nice here. Are we getting um, most of our return back? Yep, that's part of the structure of the deal is that yeah. we get our return back for what we put There are some it. people that said it cost us $3 million to move that house. We're getting Long $3 million? Dollars? If that were true, then we are not getting our return back. Yeah, if that's true, we're not getting our that's money back. That's not true. <laughs> I'm not making it up, but that's okay. Yeah. I know I know better. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I thank you for this painstaking meeting to sit through the whole yeah. thing. So. Yeah. Oh. Do you want a cookie? <laughs> Have a cookie. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, any other questions regarding authorizing the president and executive director to sign a purchase agreement with Carver County Community Land Trust with Ernst House? Hearing none, uh, is there someone that's willing to make a motion to do something? So moved. Motion by Councilmember Wong, uh, Commissioner. Commissioner Wong. Second. Second by Commissioner Hubbard. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
motion carries. Moves us to B, uh, adopt resolution EDA 2021-4, adopting the 2022 EDA budget and property tax levy payable 2022. Uh, President, commissioners, I am in front of you tonight is just the EDA portion of the tax levy. You'll see that <clears throat> the total uh, 2022 proposed budget uh, her tax levy is $182,989. That's the 6.6% 6 .6 increase, which represents just the uh, uh, new market growth and in inflation. We don't include the new program growth that we saw in the general fund because those were all general fund programs. So we just do those two components. So that's, that's where the 6.6% .6 comes from. Uh, again, that was included in the whole uh, number for a comparison with other uh, cities. So we are recommending adoption of the EDA budget as well as the tax levy for 2022. Is there anyone that would like more information from Matt? I can give like another hour. Yeah, why don't you go stand at the podium and give your presentation <laughs> again? Um, is I there tell you, Julie wanted me to, but. Is there somebody willing to make a motion uh, regarding uh, resolution EDA 2021-4? I move to adopt resolution EDA 2021-4. A uh, motion by Commissioner Hubbard. Second. Second by Commissioner Graw, adopting EDA 2021-4, adopting the 2022 EDA budget and property tax levy, payable 2022. Discussion. Again, this is really uh, approving the same thing that we've seen uh, since July. So, all right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Anyone have anything other other business? And I don't want to hear Kentucky Fried Chicken. What was the pagoda? I, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken sounds sort of good right now. I know. Yeah. We're <laughs> slap happy. But it's in Shakopee, though. All right. Yeah, I know. If there's nothing, do you want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by I don't know. Commissioner Wong. Second. Second by Commissioner Grad to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. We are adjourned for 2021. Last we'll see you in 22. Thank you all. Minutes personal.